Hi everyone, this is Myra. In this short video, I'm going to go over how to use Zapworks to create an augmented reality uh, solution for your learning uh, solution. So we're going to begin by going to my.zap.works.login. Um, this is where you are going to access the creator. And if you're not already registered, you can either log in with Facebook or Google, or if you want to use your work email address, you can do that also. I'm going to log in with my Google account. All right, so once you're logged into Zapworks, there's a few things that we need to kind of go over globally. So I have a, I have a ton of um, AR uh, targets that I've created. Um, but let's start at the beginning. So Zapworks actually uses something called Zap Codes. And when you create a new account, you will receive two new Zap Codes. You can use those two Zap Codes to create two different AR solutions. You can purchase additional Zap Codes by clicking on Get More Zap Codes, and these are fairly inexpensive. So this can be really confusing when you're first starting out. There's a lot going on on this screen, but let me just go over what I have here. So uh, you have different views that you can uh, see your screens in. You can, you know, whichever you prefer. On the right side, you have total zaps and average time on your zaps. If you scroll down, you have your uh, zap archives and your uploaded media that you can access. But to create a new zap code or a new zap with zapper, we're going to click on make a new zap code. So the first thing you need to do is you need to give your item a name. So I'm going to name this uh, poster one. And you can decide what shape you want your zap code to be in. It doesn't really matter. The one important thing is that you are going to have to add that zap code to whatever image you use. So now um, I suggest that you use Designer. Designer is a web-based um, item. You can use Studio, that does require a download. And the widget can also be used, but with the widget you can't use the target image. So I like to use Designer. And I'm gonna create my zap code. So now it just creates the zap and we're gonna click it to edit it. So this is your screen for your new zap code. So again, there's a lot going on here, but we'll break it down really uh, quickly here. So if we go down to the bottom, you can share it, uh, just the code. This code right here would be active, so if they just scan this, it would be associated with whatever media you tie into it. I like to um, go in and just start editing my zap code content. So we're gonna click. The first thing it's gonna ask you to do is to upload a target image so let's do that so we have to start by downloading our zap code now let's go here so you can see so your zap code is that little black and white wheel that you selected initially but it ha they have several skins that you can use and these are fun so you can go through and decide which ones you want to use for this I'm just going to use the traditional zap code and then I would just download it as a PNG and it's going to give it the name that I assign to my creator at the very beginning. And there it goes, it's downloaded. So let's close this out. I'm going to click continue. So now what I need to do is I need to add that zap code to my image that I want to use um, as my tracking image. So now what I'm going to do is through the power video, I've already created my image and I've added the zap code to it. So I'm just going to click upload tracking image. And I have my image right there. And it's going to upload. Then it's going to analyze the, the image to make sure that it can actually track it to make sure that the code is already associated with it. There it goes. So green is good. It sees my tracking image there, so I'm just going to use the image. And that's basically all it takes to really create that target image or that tracking image that your users will scan to interact with your augmented reality solution. 
The rest is fairly easy. So we have some options here. We always start off with the first scene. You can add additional scenes to your solution. And that's really great when you're using, let's say, video and you're adding a quiz and then you have a, another interaction. It's all based on this one target. So let's say that I wanted to create two scenes. So one would be for myself and one would be for Anne. So I would click on image because I want to upload an image. And I think I have our images up here already. There we go. And I'm going to select my image here. And then what I can do is I can either add a, I can add a button that will link the user somewhere else. I can add a video. So let's add a fun video. All right, so I'm going to add a YouTube video. I already have a link. Paste it. There it goes. Just use this video. So I like hosting my videos on YouTube because that way I'm not relying on the storage that's available in the AR tool. I have a little bit more control of it also, and, and it makes my videos public, and I can use them in other solutions. So normally you can just drag it. There we go. Enlarge it. And so I want to make the video larger because once it's the target is scanned we don't want that video to be really tiny because they won't be able to see it so additionally what I can do now is I can say okay to this I'm gonna add a button right there and let's just down here select the button and I need an action on this button so when I select the button down here you see I can, I can write something like Click to view and profile. I can add an action to it, but before I do that, I need to create another scene, which I do up here by clicking the plus sign. And so you can name your scenes also. So if we go back to scene one, I can name this scene Myra right down here. And scene two, we'll call it Anne. Oops, Anne. So now if I go back to my scene and I have this button here, I can make it a little bit smaller. Move it over. And so I don't want anything to overlap, so I want to make sure that I leave everything with enough space. Move this down here. Okay, so now if I, with the button highlighted, I can go down here and I can click on Actions. And I can tell it to go to Scene. And so now when that button's clicked, the next scene will play. So now we have to put some items on and scenes. So I'm going to add an image. And again, I have an image up here already created for her. Let's click on this one. And there she is. And move her over. And so for Anne, we'll create a contact card. And I'm going to upload an image for her. All right, so let's just click on upload. And then once her her image is uploaded, and I can even upload that last, I would just enter her details. And let's do her LinkedIn, which is, there you go, and her Twitter, and just create contact card. And what it does is it creates this card. The user would need to just tap on the card on their phone. It saves the Anne's information to their contacts. So now we can test our solution very simply by clicking on preview. And it's going to give us uh, this generic image. We can zap that and see how, it dis how all the content displays. I'm going to close it. And the final step in all of this is to actually just publish. That's all it takes. So now that we're published, there's two things that can happen. So we can use that image, the target image, and just post it somewhere that can go on posters, on t-shirts, on a mug. It can be on a piece of paper. You just have to have it available physically for your users to interact with. The cool thing about it is that we can now go back and let's say we wanted to change media here. So we want to change this picture, drag it off, and we want to add another picture. And since this is already published, 
all we're really doing is just changing the media because the target image stays the same. The media can be changed, hot swapped, as long as that target image does not change. There's a lot you can do with this. I posted a tutorial on how to create a Google quiz using Google Forms. You can attach a quiz to this. You can attach a puzzle to it. You can attach a survey to it. There's so much that you can do with this. You can create customer scenarios and really make it really engaging. So the big part of augmented reality is that you really need to decide what is your end goal for your solution and then work backwards to develop the solution. So I hope you found this useful and as always if you have questions post them at the bottom.